But will Trump's continued undercuts hurt efforts to contain the growing nuclear threat? The party panel is back. Katie Pavlich, Guy Benson, and Molly Hemingway. Is there a rift here, and how serious is it? I think it's really wrong to view them as as being at odds with each other. This is a cabinet secretary who speaks more with Donald Trump than any other member of the cabinet. And they talk all the time, and they're obviously very focused on North Korea. So is a good cop, bad cop? What's well, the strategy? I don't think it's necessarily that, just they're two people using their different strengths. And it is Rex Tillerson's job to work with his back channels to do what he can. And it's the president's job to use his unique uh, set of skills, which is mostly tweeting, to apply pressure. But they're both focused not just on North Korea, I think that's a limited way to look at it, but getting China to apply pressure to North Korea. And so that okay, but, but how does saying we have a back channel, we're talking, no, talking's dumb. How does that help with China? Well, one of the things is it's it may be true that they have these back channels, but they also might not be very good back channels. And so they are if, if the president is applying some pressure, letting North Korea know through China that they need to step up and actually provide some indication that they are taking these things seriously, yeah. they each have their own way of doing it. One right. diplomatically one through Twitter. Uh, speaking of diplomatically, is Rex Tillerson a good diplomat? Well, I think the results will have to speak for themselves, and so far it's been mixed. Do we have time for the results? Yeah, I mean, there's always time for results. I don't think that North Korea is going to nuke the United States tomorrow, right? And if we felt like that was a serious threat, we would probably wipe them out. I think this president certainly would be very serious about that. Uh, to me, this is a story of the Washington press obsessing over a potential rift and reading way into something that is a waste of time. I do think it's good cop, bad cop. Yeah. I think it is clumsy and ham-fisted, but that's what it is. And I want to see where we end up. There have been, there have been steps made, real progress with China in the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. That, and, that, and, there's, and, and North Korea has also stood down from, yeah. you know, that hard threat to bomb Guam. Yeah. Well, I think if you look at all of the noise of the tweeting and the good cop, bad cop and the obsession over the media thinking that there's a rift, I think that in general, when you look at the, the high profile nature of these conversations with the Chinese, for example, they're not listening to the noise that we're listening to. They are very focused on the seriousness of what they have to do, what is expected, what they have to enforce, and what the results of that are going to be. We get a little snippet of what's actually going on, and I don't think that Rex Tillerson or even the president is really, quite frankly, worried about what it looks like on the surface. And in terms of Rex Tillerson saying there was a direct channel, they kind of walked that back a little bit and then tried to explain that it's a direct channel but not, not really, really a direct channel. Direct channel. channel. I mean, it's a, like a direct an intermediary of, of some kind talking yeah. to the North Koreans for us. So I think that we get distracted with the noise because that's what we can see. But behind the scenes, the Chinese are meeting with you know diplomats in the State Department, and they're talking about what they have to do. Well, We're not hopefully, to those hopefully that that talk leads to some sort of positive results. That's yeah. what we can all hope for, regardless of, of what we see, what we try and glean. That if peace prevails, then hallelujah, we have won. Molly, Guy, Katie, Thanks, so good to Kennedy. have all of you here. Thank, Thank you so you. much.